this is Dr. Buckley, and in this video we'll be discussing gains from trade. So we might think about a painter, and this painter produces a painting, and it costs the painter $50. So that $50 compensates her for her effort and her time and the amount of materials that went into the painting. And imagine she gets to sell this painting for $100 we think about what this painter has now and this painter gets some producer surplus right that being the difference between what they uh, sold the good at and the minimum they would have sold it for so they're willing to sell it for 50 they were able to sell it for 100 so that's a $50 producer surplus the difference between 100 and 50 now we can think about the buyer as well the buyer may have been willing to pay up to $160 but they were able to buy it for 100 meaning they have some consumer surplus left over so the difference between what they were willing to pay and what they had to pay. And we can think about in total what's happened here. The consumer valued this product at $160, the artist produced it for a cost of $50, and the difference between the value that was created from this painting and the cost of creating it is, in this case, $110. So we call that gains from trade. Now we can think about a market for paintings. There's all sorts of different demanders, all with different use values. There's all sorts of different suppliers with different costs. And they compete with each other and it creates a market and we get a price of $100 per painting and 300 paintings produced per week. So we can think about a particular painting, say the 100th painting. Maybe somebody was willing to pay $200 for that painting and the cost of producing that painting was $75. So we can think about the gains from trade on that 100th painting would be, in this case, $125. The difference between what somebody was willing to pay, 200 and the cost, $75. And we could do this for the first painting and the second painting and the third and all of the paintings and get a total gains from trade. And we could do this in a slightly simpler way than adding all of them up. We could use the area of a triangle. So the height of the triangle is going to be the difference between the top of the demand curve where the demand curve intersects the price axis here at $250 and where the supply curve intersects the price axis here at $50. The base of the triangle is going to be 300 units so the 300 units that are purchased in equilibrium and when we have this area we get using the formula for a triangle one half base times height so one half times 300 times 200 so thirty thousand dollars worth of gains from trade. So we can think about calculating this area. And some of this area is going to the consumers. They were willing to pay more than the $100 price. And this blue area represents that. We can get the height and base of this triangle, the difference between the price intercept and the uh, choke price, $250. So $150 height and a 300 unit base. So for our consumer surplus, we have a height of $150, a base of 300, so we can use our formula, 1 half base times height, 1 half times 300 times 150 to get $22,500 worth of consumer surplus. We can do the same thing for producers. They have a producer surplus. And here we can find the height of this triangle as being the difference between the price and the intercept where the supply curve intersects the price line so at fifty dollars so a fifty dollar height and again a base of three hundred units so one half times base times height one half times three hundred times fifty is equal to seven thousand five hundred dollars worth of producer surplus now we can also do our consumer surplus and our producer surplus on the same graph and we can see if we add these up we get the $30,000 in gains from trade. So people typically think about wealth as being money or cash or, or some sort of a you know monetary thing, but wealth is more than that. Wealth is actually when we take things that are low cost and we turn them into things that are high value. It's that transfer of materials into their highest value use. That's what creates wealth. It's things that create wealth and the value of those things being higher than what those materials could have been in some other use. So up next, we can talk about some uh, other parts of these graphs, expenditures and revenues. We can also talk about total variable costs, finding that in these graphs. And we can also think about efficiency and what efficiency means.